Hi everyone, this video is going to go into more details about uh, stitch patterns and having them go about lines. Uh, my introduction video kind of highlighted a little bit, but I didn't really talk exactly about um, some of the steps. I went very quickly just to show you the feature. So basically how stitch patterns work is they're essentially graphics you draw and you have to make sure that the graphic always ends in a positive direction. And what I mean by that is the center of the screen here where the crosshair is zero. Um, the end of your pattern has to end um, before the start position. Otherwise, you'll go backwards down the line and it doesn't work that way. It just will go, um, it won't work. Uh, so what we can do is I can show you uh, the basics. So let's say we're going to do something where we actually create a graphic that we kind of think um, is an interesting shape. Let's say we do like a T shape of some sort. So we're just drawing lines. Now what happens with a stitch pattern is that whatever the stitches are stitched out, and you can see that it's kind of a messy little stitch out here. That's not ideally what we would want to use for a pattern because we want to have the graphic be perfectly the way we want for a stitch pattern. So in the case of this T, we're going to change the stitch type to as drawn. So we're, as we drew it, it puts endpoints um, exactly on the points. And if the endpoints are longer than the stitch length, um, if we turn on add stitches to lines, it's going to add stitches so that everything is 30 uh, long, um, if it needs to be. I mean, obviously this one here doesn't need to be 30 long because it's already probably shorter than 30. But now we have a pattern that's going to stitch out well. Another thing that you have to watch out for is you don't want to have a stitch pattern where the ending point, like I said, is before the starting point. So if we ended up doing this as drawn double, it would end up being the ending point and starting point exactly the same, and it would have no idea how to advance. It would just always end up at the same spot, so that wouldn't work. So if you want to do more stitches, make sure that you do either a single or triple where the stitches end up on the line. <clears throat> Now there's other things you can do, I'll discuss in a moment, of combining designs. But we're just going to do this simple design. So this simple design is our stitch pattern. So if you want, you can just simply save as, and save your stitch pattern as something. You can save it as, I'm going to go to the stitch pattern folder under program data. Um, this is where all the stitch patterns will automatically be installed in embroidery wear. What you can do is you can install them uh, two from a location. Um, so I'm just going to put them in here. So we're going to do our T. Uh, they don't have to go in that folder. I don't really need to complicate you by actually saying that. Um, but let's draw a graphic that this will go on. So we're going to do a square, let's say. So we do a square. And we're going to turn this square into a stitch pattern. or you know, stitch pattern type. Now there's no nothing being drawn because there's no stitch pattern applied yet. So then basically what we do is we get to the graphic and we copy stitches. So what copy stitches does is it just copies the stitches, not the original graphic. And you can do, you can do a lot of things with this. You can actually paste the stitches um, right to a new path on the screen. And now you have actually the stitches um, just all drawn. Now it's not a graphic any longer, so basically it's the raw stitches. So you notice since we did triple stitch, there's a bunch of stitches in here, you know. So um, you can figure out how you use that because that actually can be very useful. But um, instead, we're going to paste it to the stitch pattern. So let's do that again. I think we didn't um, copy this again. And then we'll copy stitches. And then we'll choose this graphic and we'll say paste to the stitch pattern. Now the T shape goes all the way around the graphic. And basically what's happening is this shape is being imposed along the line. So basically um, as it goes along the line, it will uh, turn the corner and things. And if you notice uh, right now, the graphic um, sometimes can turn the corner in a strange way because this particularly happens to be on this corner. So that's something you have to be aware of. Um, if you want to have a perfect box uh, with these, you could adjust the points or you could do four separate lines and each line 
uh, the stitch pattern gets imposed on a line perfectly for its length. So let me show you. When I delete these points so that all I have left is a line, you'll notice that this is perfectly um, scaled to the line length. So if I pull it longer, pull it shorter, uh, more or less stitch patterns get added. So you can do a combination of graphics to get if something that you want perfectly done. So let's go into more about how you actually use stitch patterns, um, how you can save them. So let's say we're going to do some a more interesting graphic, like a curved column of some type. And that can be actually very nice looking um, for a pattern. So we're going to do just a simple curved column, pretty symmetric one. And we're going to copy this to stitches. And then we're going to paste the stitches to a pattern file. Now in this case, it's going to automatically open the stitch pattern location. And we're going to call this a uh, satin shape. So now that we have the satin shape, um, we can just get rid of this. Um, now remember, uh, we don't have the ability to open the satin shape, just save them. So um, you might want to have a embroidery file uh, or your stitch file that you store all your different patterns and then you can save them off as you want to actually get um, a library of them. So I'm going to draw roughly a circle. I'm not doing a good job at the circle. Okay. So we do the circle, and then we're going to basically apply a stitch pattern to this, and we're going to choose the one we just saved. So we're going to change it to a stitch pattern, and then under stitch pattern, you have some options. Um, one's called a pattern file name, and so we're going to use our satin shape. And now we have uh, quite a cool satin shape object around. And you notice since uh, this is the way the stitch out is, it you know one is after another, so it's going to look like that when it stitches out. Now, of course, you want to put underlay and other things under there, probably. Um, but that actually is quite quite nice looking. Um, and so let's adjust my circle to be better um, so it's more circular shaped. Yeah. So you can have a lot of fun with these. I mean, it really requires you to kind of think it through, though. Um, you don't want weird inflection points because uh, you end up having strange patterns occur. And maybe that's kind of fun too. But um, be aware that uh, the pattern will just go through this point, And if it's a discontinuity, it's going to be uh, shaping the lines funny because it's basically following the line and um, transposing the objects along the line. Um, so that's kind of neat. Um, another thing that we have in here is that and when you have auto set, it will automatically size things and count um, so that it's approximately the right size. And you see we'd only pattern scaled it to 96%. Um, percent. Um, so uh, if you turn false off, you can actually change this to whatever you want. And now we have um, smaller patterns. But you notice that it's now 13 uh, because it actually was not enough. But you can use this for some other reasons. Um, if we turn auto on, change this to 0.5, it's not going to let us because it basically lines it up so that it goes along the line as perfectly as it can for that particular size. So in order to get smaller sizes, you would have to draw a smaller initial seed object um, that you use copy stitches from. Um, but pretty much this uh, sets some of the things. In the future, I think I might make it so that it, the offsets can be set from endpoints as well. But right now, the offset um, only goes from the starting point. So let me show you that. So if we change this pattern to a smaller point. And here's the starting point. If we wanted to actually offset that some distance, we could enter a value. And then the pattern would start at a different point. Um, and so it kind of rotates it around. Now, if we have auto set on, 
that doesn't do anything. It's only does it does it in the manual mode, and you can see what it does.